Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we're going to send some crew up to the Nerva Tug in order to fit some new RCS thrusters on it and also to sneak in a sort of ferry stage that will go between the Nerva Tug and the Mars Lander so that uh, that can serve to help it get to Mars properly, basically. And yeah. Let's just go for it. I'm going to launch it manually because of the rendezvous and also because this is sort of an awkward rocket. In order to get up to the Nerva Tug with the extra load, we've had to put additional fairings and boosters. So anyway, uh, ignition. And launch. After this, I want to test out the the Casse rocket in a recoverable mode. Basically, I SpaceXed it, uh, put landing legs, grid fins, RCS ports, and I would like to see if it could do a simulated uh, landing on a barge, basically. And if we can do that, then that would be good. Obviously, in the future, I will use uh, stage recovery to handle that part, and otherwise, we we can use it in that mode without manually doing it every time. Of course, there won't actually be a barge, so it'll just be simulated. I think the boosters are out. Okay, booster set. Oh, they gotta rip apart because of max Q. Well, we're pretty much in line with the nervous stage now. Just need to hold this inclination. Okay, separation and ignition. And nozzle extension. Check the ISP. Okay. And we should enable crossfeed now. Okay, launch escape system jettison. Well, we're over here. Not the most convenient place to try and rendezvous. I mean, of course, we would probably have done better if we were starting off at periapsis and going like that, but I guess it's alright. We'll probably overburn. We won't get into a tight orbit. We'll use all the delta V that this stage can manage. Because, well, we've got only a limited amount in the service module. It's actually quite a bit, but it's not full. And we still need to bring the thing in here, the little, I guess we'll call it a tug, the ferry stage. We need to bring it along with us. Okay, we are in orbit and currently overburning as planned. Okay, that's the end of that stage, and that, that's good. That's how it ought to be. All right, so maybe we should do like the flip around and undock thing, but meh. We don't have to do it totally, Apollo. Okay, separation. All right. We probably should have deorbited that stage, but we used all the fuel. Okay, RCS. Um, you can see the KIS containers at the bottom of this. Okay, we have docked to it. Let's make sure to lock its fuel. So that means... I don't know where it's getting the 36 from, but... Um, probably the pod, so let's not let it do that because we need the pod to retain its own fuel. There we go. Okay, let's shut down these engines. Mm, 
this should be the next staging, hopefully. Okay, good. Need to stage regularly, otherwise the gimbals won't work. Okay, so we have 1,128. Hopefully that'll be enough for the rendezvous and return. Okay, well, that'll be good enough. Take about 600 meters per second to do the rendezvous. Don't know why it reads the wrong delta V here. I decided this thing wiggles around too much, so we'll try and use those RCS ports as well. I've unlocked the fuel t temporarily over there. It'll help somewhat, I think. Okay. We have connected. We're gonna lock these fuels again. I think we should do the EVA while docked. Even though the lander is sort of floating free right now. Um, let me just go to it and see how we're we doing on just holding steady here. Um, not very good, actually. Um, okay, that should be good for now. Alright, so... Tandler Kerman is our engineer. Oh, wait, I thought I'd fix that on this. Oh, great. The EVA is not going to work, apparently. This is not the right shell for it. I forgot to change the craft file. Oh, well. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. That's a shame. At least we brought the little ferry stage up. Oh wait, there's there's another possibility. Hold on. This has a hatch that's unobstructed. We just need to dock that to this and let the Kerbal go out through here. When doing maneuvers like this, always keep an eye out for the really big nuclear thing that's right next to you. Okay, we are docked. Let's make sure this is all locked up. All right, so I, I we could get closer to that, but more importantly, let's just kill our velocity to it, which we currently have a lot of. Okay, I think I'll take 0.1 per second for now. All right, Tandler EVA for me, please. There isn't any high. Oh, no. Okay, board. Okay, right. Hydrazine. Need that. I need to add hydrazine into these things so that they have hydrazine for the EVAs. Okay, well, so much for that plan. It was a good plan. Uh, let's make sure Tandler is actually coming back home with us. Um, okay, make sure there's no crew there. All right. Unlock its fuel now. And undock. Totally forgot about the hydrazine again. Okay. Well, that's redocked. We'll need to fill this up, but technically I suppose it's okay right now. Yeah, I mean, I think we can get by with just... Because uh, we don't expect it to dock with anything else. We don't need to do the thruster replacement just yet. We'll make sure to refuel it and then uh, refuel this as well. And then maybe it'll be ready to push this over to Mars on the next window. So we'll... Yeah, I I think it's not a priority to do this yet. I'll think about it, though. I wanted to do a nice crew EVA mission with KIS-style EVAs. 
But for now, let's bring this back. And the best way to do that is, well, we're at, are we at, no, we're not at AppWapsis. At AppWapsis, we should bring it down. Uh, though, where the heck we're gonna land if we do that? Probably the Indian Ocean. I guess that's not too bad. Oh, we might be further north than I thought we were going to be. Can't quite see where we are, maybe Southeast Asia? Reentry has been fairly mild, to be honest. We're, we're getting a message here. Oh, stage destroyed. Well, that will happen. Let's clear all those. Some stage recovered, apparently. Oh, those are debris from the boosters. Just little bits. Probably just the parachute itself. Because the boosters have parachutes on them. Oh, it seems like we're right out of coast. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be water or land at this point. We are at a safe speed. Okay, and we have touched down. Recovered. Not quite a successful mission, but at least a safe mission. Alright, and our engineer and scientist got to level 1. They were newbies. But let me make a few changes. But next up, I want to test out the recoverable Kasei rocket. Okay, so here we have the Kasei rocket now with landing legs and grid fins and thrusters, though fairly weak ones using hydrogen gas. So we'll see how that works out for us. But the goal is to do a simulated landing in the middle of the water with the first stage. The payload is just a whole bunch of hydrogen to refuel our candle uh, candle stage, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get it to that if we want to still land this safely. Uh, we'll have to toss this pretty high up. We'll have to think about it. But anyway, let's just see if this part works. Uh, my plan is to shut it down with about 10% of the burn time left. So that is, so that's 191, 192 seconds. So we're talking about 19 seconds. So uh, two minutes, let's say two minutes and 52 seconds into the burn, we shut it down. And let's see how much that gives us. Uh, the fairing is awkwardly shaped compared to the previous launches because we were accommodating a large heat shield because we wanted to recover the refueler. So that is why that's the way it is. I've action grouped the engines so that one pair is on eight, one pair is on nine, and the center engine is on zero. So that's how we're going to manage those. Uh, these thrusters probably don't need to be there. They can be there. All right, so ignition. This is, of course, the core only Cassay rocket, no boosters. And launch. And it's a little bit overburdened at the moment. <laughs> So we're looking for maybe 19 seconds left on the stage time. Maybe I should try an RTLS instead. We'll see. Now let's see how fast we're getting first. It's really not having a whole lot of thrust for some reason. Uh, well, that's why we had the boosters in the first place. I'll have landing guidance up. Uh, that doesn't seem like the right KSC pad, does it? Target difference 3,000 kilometers? Oh, these are not realism overhaul locations. Hmm. Uh, well, as so happens, I have a rough idea of where the KSC is. So we can go with that. It won't be exact, but it's better than what we had by default there. Well, we don't seem to be going that fast at this point, so 
And we'll have enough delta V after this to get to orbit. Two, one, and shut down there. And stage. Okay, this will be away. Let's see what happens with this then. So, we need to activate our CS. Did they seem... Oh, wait. Is it... It doesn't seem to have good enough communications. Well, okay, there's that. I guess we can use Smart ESS. These are the... Kerbal Reusability Expansion Grid Fins. We'll see how they work out for us. Yeah, boy, are the thrusters not very effective at this point. But anyway, with us pointing in the vaguely right direction, ignition. Oh, we can't throw. Oh. We don't have good enough communication to throttle up. Great. Alright, well. Um, I guess we'll just con- oh, this is already- Can we light it? We'll just proceed here. We can check whether, having reserved that fuel with that, we can still get this to where it needs to go. So this is still an important test. Let's dump the fairings. And we don't need that. So this is our fuel delivery pod. Just the hydrogen there. And then a little bit of hydrogen and oxygen using the BE-7 engines. We've got parachutes. Got docking port, obviously. Okay, good enough for now. Let's see. Well, the target's orbit. It's a little bit higher than that, but it's ahead of us, so we might as well wait as we catch up first. Uh, wow, we're losing electric charge quickly. I don't actually remember how much electric charge the core in this takes, but we probably want to ditch it. Because our power situation is tight. I guess we'll... Just go ahead and ignite like this. Okay, that'll be good enough. And just separate. Okay, we're gonna have to control backwards for a bit here. Uh, so actually sun Well, we don't have a lot of internal electric charge in here, but at least it's balanced. Oh, unless it starts flipping around a lot. Okay, prograde. Oh, sorry, retrograde, because the engines are backwards. Okay, and ignition. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, I think the control scheme does not like this. Sometimes it doesn't really like backwards engines. Just in case, I should probably get the little antenna I have put here out. I think I'm gonna have to control it manually because neither Smart ASS nor SAS like it right now. Okay, now I can do it. It really needs to settle down before I ignite the engine. No, the yawn's getting a little bit off. And I've got these throttled down pretty. Oh no, it's going extreme again. We don't have a whole lot of ignitions with these, we only have one left. 
Well, this is the last ignition with these engines. Oh, I see. I have to sort of steer backwards to what I expect. That's surprising. At some point, I'm just going to have the candle stage try and get itself to this. This is obviously not built ideally right now. Okay, we'll leave this be and let's see if the candle tug can get here with its remaining delta V. Uh, okay, well, at least it reads electric charge. It's got a fair amount of delta V, actually. So, that's good. Less fortunate news, uh, I don't think we're carrying nearly enough liquid hydrogen for this, but we'll see. Oh, maybe it's not too bad. The dry mass of this was more than I expected. Maybe we are going to deliver a fair amount to it. Okay, finally in render range. These candle engines, I mean, deceptively powerful, I mean, the four kilonewtons go a long way. And they're a heck of a lot better than ion engines. Not in an ISP, but still. I have adjusted the way this produces hydrogen gas or produces liquid hydrogen from the hydrogen gas to try and make it a little bit better. Basically, I introduced waste into the system, which a zero boil off system ideally wouldn't have, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of math was going wrong before, so. Okay, so we have we need about 840,000 units of liquid hydrogen here, liters. 840,000 liters of liquid hydrogen. And over here we have about half of that. And we have no communication at the moment and no electric charge. Great. Oh, it's sort of spinning, but it should have communications now. Let's try and get it to stop. Okay, we have connected and transferring fuel. Okay. So that is done. Unfortunately, we can't top off the extra hydrogen up here either, or the oxygen. Then again, the BE-7 engines here, well, they have five ignitions. They could still be usable, but very limited. Undock. Okay, well, this business here. 310 meters per second, but we don't have any ignitions on the BE-7s. We're just going to have to go ahead and go retrograde and try and use the RCS thrusters. We'll try and bring it down just so I can test that part. Got to arm the parachutes now just in case we lose comms. Okay, it looks like we'll end up with just enough RCS to get ourselves down here. I think that should do the trick. And we'll use the rest of the RCS for orientation. I have no idea where we're coming down, but... And the electric charge is diminishing. Why? I mean, uh, we, while we're in time warp, it was going down, but... We were holding an orientation where we were supposed to be recharging, so... Maybe that we could stand to reduce the amount of ablator, we'll see. I only put half the ablator on. It's barely ablating right now. Oh, the antennas, yeah. I forgot to retract those. Yeah, just not ablating very much. Don't know what to make of that. Seems like it ought to be adjusted. It is a lunar rated heat shield, though. That was the only 10 meter one, except for the inflatable one that I had. I don't think the inflatable one is good for Earth, so... Not really an option. 
Yeah, not no, nothing went on the ablator. So we can reduce that and save some mass. People always talk about fuel depots, but I feel like reusable launch systems with reusable refueling pods would probably be a whole lot better. Okay, well, we still have electric charge. Everything is working fine. Took a little bit of trouble, but we did deliver the fuel we wanted to deliver. I still want to test the first stage landing, though. We need to put some extra comms on it, apparently. I mean, at least that's the best guess. We'll see. And splash down. And... Uh, recover. Uh, recover. Uh, recover. Recover at some point. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me turn that off, maybe. Okay, got it. Okay, I made some adjustments to Refueler, but we're totally not going to pay attention to that, hopefully. Uh, we are just going to try and get the first stage back here. Lighting conditions not great, but I don't want to wait around. So, with that ignition... That actually goes up there somewhere. And... Launch. So we saw that... The payload managed to do the job barely, um, with us re reserving the 19 seconds of fuel here. These engines incidentally have nine, uh, 10 ignitions altogether. I thought usually Mechjib had the right coordinates for Cape Canaveral, but apparently not this time. I could have just locked, looked down there, couldn't I have? Okay... Shut down. And those, and then set. And ignition. Oh, I didn't want to do the fairings yet, but... Irrelevant in this case. We have comms? Yeah, we do. Alright. So, surface negative. Might as well get the fins out. Them do their flappy thing. Turn off one set. Actually, maybe I'll turn off the center engine as well for now. We'll just use two to boost back. Should be enough power. We don't have nine engines like Falcon 9 after all. Do we need like downward facing thrusters to sell the fuel down? I don't know. Okay, well, some radialness is good enough, it looks like. Let's get some pitch above the horizon. Oh, oh, it's gonna... Ah, uh, shoot. I should have just gone retrograde, not surface negative. Ah, uh, that messes things up. Oh, it's wobbly. Wobbly. Does not look like a whole lot of margin to actually sit down safely. And we're not quite getting there. We'll, we would need to reserve more fuel. Um, yeah, we're gonna smack. Well, let's see which way it turns around. <laughs> uh, I guess we could use the grid fins. Let's see how well they do. Our TLS might be a little bit ambitious. We might want a barge instead. Oh. Well, heat tolerance is also something we need to check out. These don't have reaction wheels or anything. The launchers pack ones do, but this these grid fins aren't reaction wheel grid fins. They're just aerodynamic grid fins. Okay, well, this is where you would probably want to retro a bit in order to slow down. Let's see how it bears the heat. And the G-forces, too. We're 
they're not bad. But yeah, we would need to slow down. We're going very fast. Interesting sound. And not so good. Alright, well, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.